opportunity to acknowledge my son, Lindsay, who's a WA police officer. You'd like to stand up, Lindsay? <laughs> we must recognise the ongoing management of this volatile area within our community, which is at times motivated by alcohol, drugs, harassment, racism, and antisocial behaviour. Above all, we must learn to live in a way where respect is the driving principle of relationships and capacity building within our community. I believe the way to achieve this regarding our Indigenous community is by the State and Commonwealth giving back dignity to Aboriginal people. For too long now, our Aboriginal community have been victims and a part of a system that thinks it has all the answers dictating the way things have to be, social experiments and, and sometimes oppression. We need to embrace the beauty of our Aboriginal people and start listening to them. We need to engage with Aboriginal people and organisations in negotiations that have meaning and not just consultation that doesn't go anywhere. We must stop challenging native title, stop having to fight in courts for opportunities and start respecting basic human rights. We need to develop great, greater participation in creating serious business, training, employment opportunities, and most importantly, converting country into freehold so people can own their own homes. Concerns about climate change provide an amazing opportunity for engagement with traditional owners in caring for country and its natural resources management. Government needs to build on the knowledge people have of their country. This morning I had a cup of tea with the governor and he told me a story of his days working in the Yamaji country in the, um, outside of Kew and he's building a bridge. And he shared a story as an engineer that he built the bridge a certain height. And an Aboriginal man named Harry Cross said, he had a concern in his eyes, and the governor, well, the governor when he was uh, the engineer, said, uh, do you have a problem with my design? And he said, I think you should give it one more foot. So he decided, yes, I'll give it one more foot. The next year, a flood happened, and uh, the flood was six inches under that bridge. This could be a critical component of making new Australians become part of this nation and helping Aboriginal people overcome this refugee status. It also has the potential to grow our human family, as well as to grow our community and our nation. This way, we build capacity and allow Aboriginal people to engage in a proper manner with capital, equity, wealth, and sincere, honest negotiations and achieving true self-sustainability. After all, would you send two children to race each other? Knowing while that one is disabled or handicapped, knowing the other is going to win, but making them race and celebrating the winner? After all, this is the inequitable position Aboriginal people are coming from. Friends, believe me, I am committed to making a difference within our community from mental health and well-being, including primary health, to the empowerment of my people to become, to become part of the broader community, or even more importantly, and more radically, by inviting mainstream to become part of our indigenous community. This is my journey in life, my calling. Australia will never achieve maturity unless and until we recognise it's an escapable Aboriginality. As part of that process is taking place in that we are in the midst of redefining culture. Above all, culture is our identity. This is who we are and it defines our nationhood. As a West Australian and as an Australian, I am like many of you here today, 
made under other cultures as well, identify as Aboriginal. But I must also celebrate the other cultures that carve me into who I am. Therefore, with this in mind, I have a responsibility as a West Australian and as an Australian to be a voice and create reconciliatory change for my Aboriginal brothers and sisters, elders, my family, extended Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal families, and my community as a whole. To me, this is what being a WA Australian of the Year is about, creating a positive change for all. We all come from diverse backgrounds, diverse cultures and languages, but we come together as one, as West Australians and as Australians. I share with you now the work I do. In my complex, confused lifestyle, I travel the nation constantly and I've seen places that I never believed existed, places I would never have seen. I've been to places that I or you have never even heard of. But Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people are living and striving to survive, live and celebrate the place they live in. I should record a version of the song, I've been everywhere, man. I've been to Kawanyal in the top end of Queensland, Tennant Creek, Burrama Jail, Sydney Opera House, Bidjadanga, Beagle Bay, Uluru, Catherine, Mount Isa, Brisbane, Torres Straits, Nuganbar, Bunbury, Kalgoorlie, Megathara, and on and on and on. I also work with this beautiful matriarch, Mary G, the Queen of the Kimberley. She is hoping that we become a republic so she can take her rightful place as the official Queen of Australia, <laughs> as eloquently suggested by Mr. Kim Beasley. But friends, I'm amazed at the profile and impact Mary G has had throughout the nation, in particular in Aboriginal communities, from babies, young children, teenagers, middle age to old people. Mary G has crossed over into all age groups and has had a major influence. Since 1992, Mary G has been struggling along, bringing wit and humor, whilst also communicating important social messages to assist communities in their well beings and their healing. Like I say, it amazes me when I go to far north Queensland communities, Central Australian communities, Northern Territory communities, NPY lands and communities, Goldfields, Midwest, Pilbara, Kimberley. Believe it or not, Mary G is huge here in Noongar country too. Just ask Dr. Richard Wally, a secret admirer himself. <laughs> Actually, I have reason to believe he loves Mary G. <laughs> Mary G is also a pioneer. You all know that Johnny, Johnny Cash played concerts at Folsom Prison in San Quentin. Well, last year, Mary G played a show at Berrima Jail in Darwin. And it was broadcast live over 110 radio stations across Australia. It proved to be so popular that the radio stations had to play it again a week or so later. It is difficult to show how powerful Mary G has become. Power to potentially bring change and healing that also brings enormous responsibility. Combined between me and her, we have a love-hate relationship in which she at times, in fact off the record, all the time she is enormously jealous. And she despises the fact that I won WA Australian of the Year. <laughs> I hope that our state government can further recognize the quality of service and embrace and support Mary G to continue her work like the Northern Territory and Queensland governments have. Those states have supported the pioneering work of Mary G, but WA, my state, have been a bit slow to recognize the real social impact that Mary G has and continues to have. Just last week, Mary G was in Darwin doing shows back to back as MC and entertainer for the Bachelor Institute National Awards and for the National Aboriginal and Islander Doctors Association. People are committed to making a difference through education and health. A week before, I was in Cape York, far north Queensland, doing workshops with women and men on healing, self-empowerment and well-being. 